All right, in this video right here, what I'm going over and what I'm trying to get accomplished is on my Linux invoices here and on my spreadsheet, my warranty spreadsheet, you can see these dark ones. I've turned them to dark and then turned them to white uh, lettering. That means those are complete. So what I did was all of these gray ones here. So first thing I did is I went to Linux on here. So I went to vendor and I hit the little arrow down and I only did Linux on here because I'm just working Linux right now. Okay. Because there's different things you have to do with each uh, supplier. So on Linux, I pulled them all up. I went over every single one of them. I made sure everything that is in here is correct in it. Then what I did was after I finished the statement on everything, so so the statement is one thing that allows you to go ahead and pay the bill. Once you pay the bill and you've paid six hundred dollars for a coil, eight hundred dollars, sixteen hundred dollars for a coil, now you want to get your money back on it. Okay, so one of the things that we have to do is we put that address, PO, everything in here, and this spreadsheet is to follow up to get my warranty stuff back. So what I'm in the process of doing and what Lennox is asking for, every time you submit something, they're asking for the paperwork to back up everything that you're saying is true. So where I'm at right now is I went ahead and I just printed out all these POs again. So I just went back over to Lennox and printed out every PO that is a warranty so that I can have each one of them go through and then I re-put all that information back on this particular stack and then as I go to Lennox and I process these POs or the warranty part of the POs then I'll print that out and stick it with it so then this is what I would be looking at here is that when I have one and I process it this is the claim for Lennox right here okay here's the claim for Lennox everything that I do and all the paperwork that I present to them I'm printing out and I'm putting with this so that I'll actually have that with it okay um, so now before I go to Lennox and I start trying to process one at a time I said well shit what I need to do is I need to go ahead and take all these POs go to Lennox pull up the PO, save the PO as a PDF, and then I save them in saved pics to email right here, and then I right click into it and I make a folder for every address. So like with this one here, 27491, which is this one here, which is 3064 Berman Highway, okay? So the invoice that I am doing right here is the PO 3064 Berman, is 27491 so it's PO 27491 and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the address in here 27491 which is gonna be 3064 3064 Berman Berman Highway now that's telling me what this is for then I'm gonna go ahead and put the customers name in there as well so that I don't get any of these documents confused with anybody else. And that was uh, Najay A N A N A B A, whatever that spells. So then from here, I am into save pics to email. I go into it, I right click, I go new, I create a folder. And then this folder is going to be this address, 3064 Berman Highway, okay? So I'm going to right-click that, rename it, and then I'm going to scan the address. If I can do it. There we go. Come on, Eric. So we're going to copy that, right click again, rename it, paste it, open it up. Then I'm going to save that document in there. So when I save that document in there, 
anything that I am going to have to provide for Linux, which this is one of the things that I'm going to have to provide for Linux, everything I have to save, like invoices or anything like that, I'm going to end up having to save it in that folder. So when I process the uh, documents and the warranty stuff for Linux, I can just go right to that folder, upload all the information in that folder, and then that claim can go ahead and process through. So what I'm doing right this minute is I am just saving all these documents and creating folders for each one of these. That is going to be my first step. Okay, just to save all these stuff and make make documents for, make invoice uh, folders for everything. So this one's going to be complete. I'm going to go to the next one. So all I'm doing right now is creating folders and um, allowing myself to be able to get to the next step once I go into Linux. Is that's all I'm doing at this point in time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up my PO. In this case, is 27534 which I have these things printed out in 27534 is going to be this one here which is seven oaks uh, brassette so now this is a blower motor so this is one that we actually put so one of the things that they're going to be asking you for is model and serial number so you're going to go to ESC so I'm going to go ahead and key up 25 seven oaks 25 seven oaks that's Victor Brassette so now he has got a whole bunch of units here. So we're replacing a blower motor for one of those systems. Now I gotta say, okay, well hell, which system is it that we're replacing this blower motor for? Then I actually have to go to my attached documents. I'll look at the date of this uh, invoice here, which is uh, 612. I go to my attached documents, go to 613 right here. And what I'm looking for is an invoice that um, shows that we replaced this particular motor. So this is PCO kit downstairs. Let me go into the one that says 621. And this has replaced two UV bulbs in there, so it's not that one. I'm gonna go into the next one for upstairs. This one here is the blower motor right here, okay? So this is my invoice for my blower motor, W164592. Now, now that I've pulled this particular invoice up, one of the things that I want to do is I want to save this. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to save, set as, and I'm going to save as, save as the top part right there. Then I am in save pics to email. So I'm going to change this JPEG here and I'm going to change this to the invoice which is going to be w-164921645 uh, and this is going to be invoice and then we're going to put 25 seven oaks so we got his address in here and then I'll just go ahead and put his name Victor Brasset so if they're looking for something I'm going to make it easy for them to find it as well too. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click in here, hit new, make a new folder, and then I'm going to make this 25 Seven Oaks, and then Victor Brasset. So now I'm going to go ahead and open that up and then I'm going to save that in there because I know they're going to want this invoice stating that we actually replaced it. Now when I look at this invoice, this invoice is telling me a model and a serial number of the system that we installed this blower motor for. Okay, so on here when you read it, it says 101207-03 MTR which is motor and then dash BL which is blower motor. A blower motor is in the air handler it's not in a condenser it would be CF for condenser fan motor here it's a blower motor so now I know the model and serial number of the system that we actually replaced that blower motor in so on this piece on this invoice right here I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna write the model number and serial number so this is gonna be a CBX 27 UH 
0303030, and then the serial number is 1614E20432. Now I'm going to go into my equipment over here in Linux, or in ESC, and I am going to go find that model number in my equipment over here, which is going to be this one here, 204E32, 204.32 I mean, and the installation date you want to write on here as well because they're going to ask you for that in the Linux deal, installed 6.25.2014. And if they ask you for registration on this thing, which they will because they're going to want to know is it registered in that particular customer's name, no problem. What you do is you go ahead and you double click onto this, you copy the... Um, the serial number, copy the serial number, hit OK, get out of here, you're in Linux right here, you want to go back to, let me get out of that particular one, and we're going to go backwards in here, and what we want to do is go over to the warranty claim, if it allows me to go. So then I'm just going to go hit Linux Pros right here. I'm already in. And then I go Warranty. And I go Quick Coverage Lookup. Agree to this right here. I copied my serial number. I'm going to paste my serial number. I'm going to search it. There's your serial number. CVX27. Install date 625.14. Limited 5 year warranty. And then an additional 5 years is on here as well. Now, I can go ahead and right click this and I can save as Warranty Tools Linux Pros um, and it's got a HTML, okay? So I don't know if I could change that to JPEG or a PDF, no, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just save this. I'm gonna leave it saying Warranty. I'm gonna leave the link to the back part of it. And I'm just going to leave it as warranty registration. And I'm going to put the address on it, which is 25 Seven Oaks. Then I'm going to make sure I'm saving that into the correct one, which is 25 Seven Oaks. I'm going to it. Now I can save that in there. So since I pulled this up, they're going to ask me for this, so this is a document that I can go ahead and send to them. So now I'm proving that this motor is registered with this air handler and the installation date is correct. I'm going to go to this 27534PO in Linux now, okay? So when I go to here and I'll go to my account again and I'm going into the invoices and manage and pay. I wish it allowed me to open up. Matter of fact, I could probably open up a whole nother deal. Maybe I'll do that in just a second. So here we're going to go into open invoices. We're going to go to PO number. The PO number is going to be 27534, 27534. It drops down. We're going to click it, apply it. It's only going to pull that one up. I hit my PDF on it. From the PDF, I hit download over here. Now that invoice, I'm going to take everything off except where it says PDF. And I'm going to leave the invoice. And I'm going to put that as PO-27534, 27534. And I'm going to save it into uh, 25 Seven Oaks, just like it says up there. Uh, that's your PO, and I'm going to go dash, and I'm going to put 25 Seven Oaks. So now, if anybody needs that, it's there. So now I've saved this invoice into the folder of 25 Seven Oaks, so when I go in to do my warranty claim, I just got to go into that folder and upload those three documents that I just put in there. So I've got everything that I need. I've got registration. I have the invoice that we installed it, um, and I have the PO and the invoice from Lennox, because they're going to ask for all that. If they don't ask for it, then they're going to decline your claim, and then they're going to ask for it then. Then you got to go back and do it. 
So that's why I'm just taking these steps right now and making sure that all this crap is in here. So I'm going to get out of that one. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and pull the next one up. So the next PO is 27,525. I'm going to go ahead and open that one up. So since I have that one open, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So you don't know what customer this is for, 27,525. So then you have to go into ESC over here, okay? And up at the top, when you hit search, it pops this down, 27,525. Then you hit your PO right there. That tells you what customer this is going to be because this is 936 Conti Street. And this is the coil. This is actually the one that I did just a little bit earlier. So I literally just got finished sending this particular one uh, for Char Charles Speets. Actually, it's right here. This is the one that I did for Charles Speets. So, no, that's Freddie Toro. Uh, this is one I actually processed earlier is what it was. And when I processed it, they're actually denying the claim on it, but I'm trying anyway to see if I can get it. They're denying the claim because when we installed this thing in 2016, we registered the system, and then they had the wrong serial number on it for a heat strip. So we sent them an email telling them to that the wrong serial number was on the heat strip. Well, they canceled our entire registration. Instead of just fixing the heat strip, they canceled the whole damn registration. So here we are eight years later, and they're saying that we have no warranty on it. So I'm just fighting them with it is all I'm doing. So in this particular case, I, this one's already, this particular one's already being, being fought for right now. So I'm just going to skip it. I've already uploaded all the documents in that particular one. So I'm just going to go right by it. I'm going to go to the next one. 27488. Click on here, 27488. Pull that up, apply it. Got it pulled up, hit your PDF on it. Here it is here again, 27488. This is the invoice that I have here, exact same invoice, okay? Remember, I'm going to download this, but I got to know what customer to download it to. I've got an address already written on here, which is 3849 First Street. So I can go straight to qualify right here. Now remember, I've got to get my address on here and then I got to go to the equipment and find a model and serial number that this is going to apply to. And this is an ignition control, which is going to be for the furnace. So if you don't know that, you just ask and then we tell you, I'll tell you anyway. I would be the only one that would be able to tell you. So when you have those questions and you see me come through, you go, hey, stop, what is a control? What is an ignition control? Is it in a furnace, a coil, condenser? What is it in? The technician on the invoice should actually have model and serial number of the system that it was actually put in. So that should eliminate, you know, some questions on that as well, too. In the, uh, in the uh, address, you've got Donna, uh, Laborde, and then you got Complete Care Plus, both with the same exact address. The information you're looking for is going to be in the Donna Laborde one, which is the customers, because you're looking for the model and serial number of the furnace and coil and the install date. In this case, it's going to be the furnace, so I double click on it. And remember, on this, I need to put on here what model number, which is an SL280 UH090V60C, serial number is 5922J22188, and then the install is going to be 112 of 22. 11 to 22. All right, so I've got that down at the bottom here. So again, when I go to Linux, my information here, when I go to it, it's going to all be on here. I'm doing my paperwork as we go. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to go ahead and download this. Now I know what address it's going to be. I have to go now to save pics to email. I'm going to make another folder, new folder. And what is the address I'm going to put it under? Simple. Right here, 39, uh, 3849 41st Street. 
rename it. 3849 41st Street. 41st Street, and that is going to be Donna Laborde. Then I'm going to open that up, and since this is the PO that I am playing with in here and saving that PO, I need to know what the PO number is. And then I'm going to go ahead and put PO dash, which my invoice, the PO is 27488, 27488. And we are going to put the address, which is 3849, 41st. And we're going to just go ahead and put the customer's name, which is Donald Laborde. All right, we're going to go ahead and save that. So now I have this particular document in a folder, again, that is in my saved email folders. So now, since I'm in here into Donna's, one of the things they're going to ask me for is the invoice of the system that was actually uh, or when that part was installed. So I'm going to go to attach documents. This date on here is uh, 6 1. So I'm going to look for an invoice on 6 1. And I got warranty repair right here on 6 6. And it says repair control, replace furnace control board, retest the system without issue right here, downstairs system. So now, since I'm in here, let me just open up this other one and see what it says in here. It's actually exactly the same. Check system found control board is bad, okay? So I can actually take both of these. Um, eh, I think I just needed the one where it was replaced. So I'm going to right click on here. I'm going to save as and then I'm going to wipe everything off except for the JPEG and I'm going to put on here invoice and I'll put that invoice number which is 164357 64357 uh, 355 yeah, it looks like 355Q6 and again, we're going to go ahead and put the address, which is 3849 41st. 3849 41st. And then I am now going to say, okay, where's my invoice? Where's, do I have a 3849 in here? Boom, there you go. Double click into it. Now I'm going to save that particular invoice in there. So now I have an invoice that I installed this particular part that they're going to ask for. Okay. Now, they're going to ask me again, is this system registered? So now, if I go ahead and I go here into equipment, this particular equipment is a signature series equipment, so they really and truly should not have a question about registration on it. If I go into my attached documents, registering of the furnace, I have one line here that says registration of furnace. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And there is my registration of my furnace, and that is with Comfort Shield. That's not the registration for Lennox, that's the registration for the extended warranty. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and I'm just going to key a couple things in here. And there's my Lennox registration right here. So now, this is something that I want. This is the original registration for the furnace to coil the condenser. So I'm going to go ahead and hit download on here. And this is giving me a registration for it. And again, we are in the 3849 41st Street. So I'm going to put registration. 3849 41st. So I'm going to go ahead and save that in there. So again, all I'm doing is setting myself up. So when I go to Linux and make these claims, I just go straight to that folder, download all that crap in there, or upload all them, them uh, pictures in there, send it on through with my invoices, and I'll be able to process these claims. So all I'm doing here is just taking care of this, getting it ready. Boom, this one can go turn over, and I can go to my next one. My next invoice here that I'm looking for is going to be 27... 597. Alright, again, 
again. We're going to pull this up. And this is going to be a CX3560C coil. Okay. So this I know is going to be a replacement coil. And this is for 7310 Zempel Street. 7310 Zempel. I just happen to know that. And that's Sandra Elsky. And we're going to go ahead and click in here. 7310 Zempel. And Sandra, Sandra. And we're going to go to her equipment. And her equipment is going to be right here. A CX3560C. So remember, on this invoice here, because they're going to ask you for it, you are going to do what? You're going to put the CX35-60C. Dash six F dash one serial number six zero one seven G three five eight nine six install date nine twenty one twenty seventeen. This coil being registered has got a ten year warranty on it, so it's it's under warranty till twenty twenty seven. Again, we're gonna take this invoice right here since we know where it's going to. We're gonna make another file. We're gonna download this invoice here which is going to be invoice and then we're going to go PO-27597 27597 and then we're going to go dash 7310 Zempel Sandra Elsky And we are again going to go back into save, fix the email, right click it, new one, folder, 7310, simple. Sandra Elsky. Now we've got a folder, double click in the folder, save that into the folder. Again, we have to now come into our attached documents over here. That system was installed back in 2017. We're gonna go look back in 2017 when it was installed and we're gonna look for registration back then. If we have that registration in here. Sandra Elsky registration, bingo. All right, we're gonna download this and this is gonna be we're going to call this registration 7310 simple and we are going to save it in that folder boom so now we have an invoice or we have the registration now we're going to go back into attached documents here now we're going to go to today's date which was the coil replacement we're going to go click into it and there's my invoice stating we replaced the coil with the model number here. So we're going to go ahead and download that as well. It's a lot of crap to get my money back. But if you don't do this, this is 600 bucks you're playing with. Or in this case, it's $1,200 you're playing with. Uh, invoice number is... Invoice number is... I don't know what the invoice number is. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see if I go to dispatches, it's going to be 164728. 164728. And how I got that is when I go to dispatches, the dispatch number is 164728. Well, that's actually our invoice number for replacing that coil. So 7310, simple, street. Sandra Elsky. So now we can save that. Now she's ready to roll. We're rocking and rolling here. I'm going to go ahead and close these out as I'm going through. So again, I wrote everything on this paper here the model and serial number, the install date. I got all that stuff sitting in the deal, waiting for everything. Next. Well, I got a couple more on this video here that we're doing. Let's do it again. Our PO is 27585 now. Pull it up, apply it. 
hit my PDF on it. We're going to go ahead and download it. And we're downloading. And again, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up on here, my PO, because that's what I'm looking for. 27585, 27585, because this is giving me all the information that I need. My 27585 is going to pull my PO up. When I pull my PO up, now I'm looking for a job and in this case there is no particular job for this so this is a coil a CH3536 C coil um, this particular coil is actually not going to be warranty so this is one I actually don't have to do this was a coil that was actually bought um, and it was bought I think it was too large if I'm not mistaken it was the wrong coil purchased so this was one I printed it out that literally should not be printed out on there. So we'll take this and put it on the side. And we are going to exit out of that one because we're not saving that one. We're going to get out of that one. And we're going to get out of this one. Alright. Get out of there. Get out of there. And we're going to go to our next one here. Which is going to be 27606. Six. Again, we're going to go to the purchase order. When we look at the purchase order, we're going to go to the address on the job right here, which is 783 Terry Parkway. We're going to copy that. We're going to go to qualify. Hit the arrow down. Address here. Right click. Paste it in. Pull the job up. Because again, we need to learn. When we go to our equipment, this model number of this coil is going to be the same model number of this coil right here. I'm going to pull my model and serial number up here so that now we can say, okay, this is a warranty coil. So what is my model number here of the coil that we actually are replacing? Because you have to have the original model number and serial number of the coil that was originally installed, in this case, 711 of 2017. So it's the CH35-51C-2F-3. You have to make sure you put all these all those uh, numbers in there. 6017E29960. Install date is 7-11-2017. That's on there. We're going to pull this invoice up again. 27606. 27606. We're going to hit this down, put 606 on there, and pull that up and apply it. Hit your PDF on it, pull it up, hit download on it. We are going to go to save pics to email. We're going to right click it, we're going to hit new, we're going to create a new folder. The new folder address is going to be what? James Walker over here. And we're going to move this out the way so I can get his address, 783 Terry Parkway. Your name, 783 Terry Parkway. And we're going to put his name, James Walker. Alright, so now I can go into his folder. Remember, this is the PO that we're actually saving over here. So I got invoice, and then I put PO dash two seven six zero six two seven six zero six. Taylor and Tyler, how may I help you? Yes, hello. Um, Tyler, forty ten. Uh huh. I, bought, I, 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 sp I spoke to you yesterday. We have you set up for tomorrow for somebody to go out and do the leak check on the inside. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to give an update because um, I noticed that the little, the little glass bobble, I can already see it flashing. Uh, sometimes it does flash even if it's full. So, even if it's full? Yeah, okay. so, sometimes it does. The guy yesterday made it sound like if it was flashing, that way it was low. So I just, I just want to let you know. Okay. Um, it does flash and then it clears up sometimes, so not a problem. Okay, that's, 
That's fine. I just wanted to know. I just wanted to let y'all know just as an update. Okay, no so, problem. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. night. All right, so we again, we are saving this. This is the CX-30 561 coil. Taylor and Tala, how can I help you? Taylor and Tala. You must have buttoned out me. All right, um, we're gonna hit download on here. I don't know if I did it already. We're gonna hit download on it. Let's see, Terry Parkway, is that it? Terry Parkway here, Terry Parkway actually already did it. Okay, so we can go ahead and exit out of that. So I uploaded that one. We've got model serial number on here. We've got date on here. We're gonna go ahead to 2017 is when we installed this. We're gonna go to attach documents, go back to 2017. And we got Walker registration. Here's my registration. We're gonna get my documents on here. We're gonna go my P leave the PDF and we're gonna type in registration. And that's gonna be, what was his name? James Walker. And that is 783 Terry Parkway. See, when you do all this stuff and you get it all set up and ready to roll, so I've got his invoice, I've got his registration, now I need to get the invoice that we actually went ahead and installed the, the blower motor or coil or whatever it was, the coil. Replace warranty evaporator coil. So here's my invoice that we actually went and did it. Okay. So now we're going to download that and then we're going to name this one the invoice number. Invoice W-164-639. 164-639. See what Lennox is trying to do is they're trying to make sure that you're not scamming them and getting a free coil and putting it in your mom's house that's what they're trying to do okay so that's why they're having you upload all this information so that they have all this shit on their files so i've got all three of these sitting in there i got registration i have the invoice and i have the um uh the pf Okay, so all that's in there. So on here, I'm gonna, I, I didn't put the, in, the address on here yet. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that at the top. 783 Terry Parkway. So our next video, I only got two more of these to do real quick. Or three or four more, whatever it is. Um, so our next video that we're going to do is um, taking this information right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it on Linux. So we'll see how easy it is that I have all that information and how quick you can upload it on Linux. My next one here, 27672. Alright, pull that one up. Got my PDF. Got this in here. I'm going to go ahead and download that. Again, we're going to go save pics. Now we got to figure out where this is going. 27672, you're going to come back over here. 27672, you're going to pull that PO up. You pull the PO up, you're going to look at the job, which is Avenue J. And Avenue J is going to be Roy Lanning right here, 429 Avenue J. You hit qualify, and then you type in 429 Avenue J. Pull Roy Landing up. Now you got his information up and qualify. You pull his equipment up. We are replacing an evaporator coil in here. So his original evaporator coil was installed in 2016. We double click on it. And we're going to put this at the top. Roy Landing. And address again is 429, I think it was. 429 Avenue J. Avenue J, and then we got a model number which is CH33 43B 2F 3, and serial number 6016D06107. Now, install date, 
is 7-22-2016. Now, you're not going to know these model numbers like I know these model numbers, obviously, but I actually do have a video that explains all the model numbers and the nomenclature to see whether this is a furnace, a coil, or condenser based on a model number. So I do have a video on that that you could watch. So we are going to go now. We're going to make a 429 Avenue J. We're going to save picks, 429 Avenue J. There is none here. You right click it, new folder. And this is 429 Avenue. I just, nope, I did it right. Okay, Avenue J. Name is Roy Lanning. All right, we are going to make this the invoice here, the PO actually. You got to make sure you leave the PDF part of it in, in case you don't know that. And this is going to be PO 27672, 27672. And this is uh, 429 Avenue J, 429 Avenue J, and Roy Lanning. You know, this is one, it's good for us to make sure we have all this in here, but also when you send it over to them and they're going through all that crap, well, if they misplaced it some kind of way, shape, or form, save it the wrong way, this is telling you what it's for and, and it makes it easier for them to find it as well too. All right, that's saved in here. I have model and serial number install date sitting on here get out of there. Now I got to go to my documents for 2016 again. 2016, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my registration. Here's my registration on my coil. What am I going to do? I'm going to save it. So I'll go to my PDF. Boom. Type this as registration. 429 Avenue J. It's in the correct folder here. Save it. What else do I need to do? I need to go to my invoices over here for when we installed this coil, which would be the last one. I pull that invoice up showing that we installed it. We're going to download it. It'll be my invoice here. W164979. W164979. Now we can save that one. Right, we're going to go ahead and put in there 429 Avenue J. There you go. Save that. Boom. That's done. We're rocking and rolling now. It is 648 on Sunday night. Let me see how I spend some of my weekends. All right. Let's rock and roll to. 676 is my next one. Six. Apply. Well, we got a format that we're doing this and it's rolling pretty quickly here. So we're going to go click that. And we are going to go ahead and download that. What invoice now? 27676. We got to go to top here 27676 pull our PO up go to our job see what job it's for 3020 Metairie is who that's for Paul Arsement we're going to go ahead and click on this we're going to copy that and we're going to go to qualify and hit the arrow down put it in the address we're going to paste it and you can take off part of that sometimes and there your job comes up boom Paul Arsimit. And then what I want to look on this one is, so we installed this, and it, it definitely was a um, a uh, warranty on that. So your equipment, and then we're going to look at this one. Now, this particular one is a Lennox Smart S30 thermostat. The price on that thermostat is $682.50, okay? So again, we're going to go ahead and right click over here. We're going to hit new. We're going to hit folder. We're going to create a new folder, which is going to be 3020 uh, Metairie Heights. And that is going to be Paul Arsement. All right. 
right, so therefore this is opened up. Boom, open that one up. This is the PO we're actually saving here, right? And, oh, all right, dash, the PO 27676, 27676. Again, put the address in, which is 3020, 3020, Metairie Heights. And we'll go ahead and put his name as well, too, Paul. Now we can save that in his file. So we've saved the PO in there. Now what do we need to do? We need to go to the thermostat. We're going to double click on his thermostat right here. So the original thermostat that we were replacing, the model number on that thermostat is a 10F81. And our replacement is going to be an S30 thermostat. Your serial number on it is KK2. 1H83699. Okay. So we'll, it's registered as well. So we're going to hit OK on it. Again, we're going to go to attach documents. The install date I forgot to look at. So we go back to the equipment. Our install date is for that particular thermostat. Now, that particular thermostat has 11 and 1 of 21. We have to go back to the original thermostat, which is 2016. So that thermostat's been replaced before. So now I'm going to scratch out that serial number, okay, because that's not the correct serial number. My original serial number, which is WS15 L04732, that's the original one, okay. Now I can go ahead and I can, I can put in the notes because they allow you to put in notes as well too and therefore I'll just go ahead and put in notes KK uh, 21H83699 and I'll put on here replacement so now you're replacing it with the S30 thermostat and you hit OK on here and then you want to go to the original install of 2016, attach documents. So 2016. And see if you can find all that crap. Install invoice, Linux registration right here. See if the thermostat's in there. Ah, how about that? The thermostat's in there. 04732. That's it. So there's your registration right there for the original invoice. So here. So I'm going to type in registration. Address 3020. Uh, battery heights. Okay, so that gives you the registration in it, it gives you the invoice in it, and then we have an invoice now for when we actually installed the thermostat, which would be your last, and I actually have the, last, the new serial number for the new thermostat. So on this particular invoice right here, the new thermostat model number, uh, thermostat serial number is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on here because I don't know if they actually saved it. HD 22L53923. So now I want to go to my invoice that's on 627, and then this invoice here, there's your invoice that you actually replaced the defective thermostat. So now I'm going to download this particular one. We're going to save as, and this one's going to be invoice number. Invoice number 165114, 165114, and it looks like uh, I-20 maybe, I-20, 
Um, that's your invoice number four, 3020 Metairie Heights, 3020. Alright, so we'll save that, and that is the invoice in there that we actually did it. Um, exit out of that, exit out of that. Now I wrote that serial number down here, so if I go into my equipment, and I don't see in my equipment here an S30 thermostat in here. So I just found a problem that when we, when we did this particular invoice, nobody put the new serial number in there. So since I found that, I guess what I gotta go do, I go to edit customer, and then I go to equipment, and then I go add new. And it's gonna be manufacturer is gonna be Lennox. The model number is gonna be an S30 thermostat, S30. The type is gonna be IAQ, your serial number, HD. 2L5392 3. Now the install date on the thermostat is going to be 626. Right there. But the warranty is going to be right here with the original one, which is 223 of 16. So it's going to be 223 of 2026. 0223 of 2026. That's going to be the warranty now because there's only three years left. And then in the notes, I'm going to put replacement. T stat. And then I'll go ahead and I'll save it. Hit OK. Now I added the piece of equipment in there at the bottom, is what I just did. So now here I've got. Registration, the invoice of replacing, and again, I've got the the uh, PO that I actually purchased it, and then that one. Maybe we got two left here. Let's get this shit over with. Yes. Exit, 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 exit. Exit that one too. And our PO here is 27677, 27677. Pull our PO up. We're going to go to our PO over here, 27677. We're going to apply it. We're going to apply it. We're going to pull our PDF. This is a warranty. This is a replacement. This is an evaporator coil. This is an evaporator coil here. $1,482 for this damn coil. This is absolutely ridiculous. Um, an air handler cost me $700. The coil cost $1,482. You can buy a whole air handler for half the price of the coil that goes in it. They just jack these prices up so that they want you to buy an air handler. As soon as this goes out of warranty, then the customer just has to buy a new air handler because they jacked the price up so much. So the customer's name here is James Woodall. Address is 122 Magnolia. Alright, so this is a warranty coil. So what are we looking for now? I got 122 Manor Boulevard. Boom, copy that. Go to qualify. Everything you need is in qualify, ladies and gentlemen. Everything you need is in qualify. Paste it. Nothing comes up. When nothing comes up, when you put that address in, because whoever typed the job in, the job is not always the exact same as the actual address you are looking for. So you just backspace it a little bit, get some of it off of there, and then it'll come up. No problem. That's what I've been doing. If you notice, I, I take a little bit off every time I do it. I go into my equipment, and then I want to go into my air handler, which the coil is inside the air handler. So here, my model number of my air handler, CBX. 25UH-042-10, serial number is 1716K10189, okay, install date 12-1-2016, 12-01-2016, okay, we've got that, 
registered install date according to Linux is 11-28 of 2016. So I'm going to do that. 11-28. 11-28 of 2016. Okay. So sometimes your, your registration date and the actual install date may be different because whoever in, registered may have registered it a little bit later than when it was actually installed. That can happen. Or they forgot to do it or something like that. That could, that could possibly be. So now there you go. Now we're going to go to attached documents. So 11 28 of 2016. We're going to go back down to the 2016. We're going to see what we can find. See if we can find the registration. We have an install invoice right here of 2016. That's 12. Let's see if there's anything back here. Renewal. James Woodall. Let's see. Install invoice. Here's the install invoice on it. So you do have an install invoice of the original uh, that shows that. And then you have it is registered as well, too. So we were looking for on these other ones. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download this. And then I'm going to put in here install invoice. Because sometimes they, well not sometimes, they always want, want you to verify that that is the customer. So there you go. i got to install invoice, the original invoice as well. Um, and that was... We're going to go 11 28 2016. I don't have to put that, I just got the address 122 Magnolia. 122, is it? Yeah, Magnolia. Magnolia Manor. Alright, so boom, we can save that, but it needs to be in the particular one. So we go back to save, we're going to right click, we're going to new, we're going to folder, we're going to go 122. What is it? Magnolia Manor. Okay, name James Woodall. I double click into him, install invoice, save that, get out of there. 1482, we got this here, 1482, we're going to download it. And the PO on it is PO 27677, put a dash, PO 27677, James Woodall, is that? Yeah, James Woodall. Uh, 122. Oh, yeah. Matter. Save that in his documents. So I saved his invoice, his invoice, his PO. Now I got to go to the install date of when we actually installed it. So install dryer, warranty coil tag, install warranty coil. Boom, there's just a picture of it, 622. There's my actual install of the coil itself. And then we're gonna right click on it, save as. And 165012, 165012 is the invoice number. address in there which is 122 <sighs> Magnolia Manor James Woodall and we're gonna go ahead and save that that one's done now exit out of there exit out of there back into here Everything saved. Last one, ladies and gentlemen. Last one. And we are going to go to PO27485. Four eighty-five. Pull the PO up. Apply that. Pull the document up. We're going here. Nope, not going there. We're going here. 27485. 27485. 
five. Pull the nine up. Yo. Oh, what are we doing? We're going to 2645 Crestwood right here. Copy that. Go to qualify. Hit your arrow down. Go to address. Right click paste. Got your address up. Pull it up. Go to equipment. This is a low pressure switch that we actually replaced. The low pressure switch is actually on the condenser. This is going to be, his name is Terry Gulledge, I believe it is. Yes, it is. And that's 2645 Crestwood. Model number XC21-060-2. Dash two thirty dash eleven zero five eight one five M zero seven one six five. I don't have an install date on this system because we did not install it. But the serial number is fifty eight fifteen, which tells me it's a twenty fifteen model because this is a signature series system. It has a ten year labor ten year parts warranty on it, not labor ten year parts warranty on it. So if it's not registered, it will actually go back to the original manufacturer date of this system, which, I don't know, uh, the serial number is in 2015. It may be the fifth month, eighth day of 2015. That may be the, inst the original manufacturer date of that unit. So I actually don't have an install date. So if they ask you for an install date, you can just make up a date in 2015 because it's a 2015 system because if, if it's not registered, the first thing you do actually is you take your serial number and you go to warranty in Linux and you go um, look up claims or look up registration. And then when you look that up, if it gives you an install date, there you go, you use that install date. If it don't give you an install date, that means it was never registered. If he has no paperwork that it was ever registered, then what you have to actually use is the 2015 and any date in 2015 is what the answer is there. So I'm just going to put install 2015 on here. Okay. We are now going to go and we are going to, I got model and serial number on there. I don't have an install date on it. I do have an invoice on here that we actually installed the part. So I'm going to go to my PDF on here. Download my PDF. Save, pick to email, right click, new folder, address of the customer, 3645, 3645, Crestwood, and that is Terry Gulledge. We are going to double click in it, and this is going to be invoice, and it's going to be PO dash. 2745 Terry Gulledge All right, and we're going to save that. Then we're going to come over here and we are going to go to attach documents. My attached document should have an invoice. Per text port, eliminate low pressure switch test system, code to allow access, exit out of that one. We're going to go to the next one and replace low pressure switch. That's the one you're looking for. Right click, save as. And invoice number on here is going to be W-164-296. And... 2645 Crestwood Terry Gulledge Save and I am in the wrong deal Invoice that's Mattery Heights Magnolia Manor don't give me that shit Alright so we are looking for 2645 Crestwood right here going to save that in there and it looks like I saved my other one in the wrong spot so let's go do it again which 
which would be 20, 36, 45, there you go. And then we'll let's save this a different way and then do it again. PO dash 27485. And that is 2645 Crestwood. Terry Gummage. And ladies and gentlemen, we are finished. Get out of there. We're gonna get out of Linux. We're gonna get out of Linux. It's already 7:10 on Sunday night, and I am getting the hell out of here and going home. All right. So that takes all of these POs. Okay. Now all these POs, remember, all warranty stuff. Okay. And since it's all warranty stuff, it has to be on this spreadsheet. Okay, so all I did was I went through each one of these, I double clicked on it, I pulled up the invoice on Lennox, because I pulled up the PO on here, all the, all the ones that are not closed, the ones that are closed are, are the dark gray ones, the late gray ones are open. So I have to complete my warranty stuff. The only way I get my money back is if I go to Lennox and I create a warranty claim, and I process the claim, which will actually be on the next video. This is getting my ass set up so that when I look at wherever the hell my, my uh, folder is, I don't know where it is off the top of my head right here, when I go into that folder and open up those claims, here it is right here, there's my folder. When I go into here, I just go to the, that particular uh, folder and I can open up all the claims and then highlight them and upload all those documents right into Linux. That way it saves me a bunch of time so when I do the next part of this, which is going to Linux and uploading everything, now all that's going to go by quick so that I, all those uploads can now, I can start getting my money back on everything. But this is just part of the process of it. It's a long process, but I have, I have a lot of claims in here that we're actually trying to do because I'm trying to catch up on stuff that nobody has been doing for the last month or so. So this is not really this much work every single day or anything like that I'm literally trying to catch up a month's worth of work that's why it's so much so this again is Lennox warranty stuff um, processing all the warranty stuff getting it ready to make the claims remember this is your lifeline right here this is your lifeline you have got to maintain this and then as soon as you get your money back and you get your vendor credit, you put your vendor credit number in here, and then you put the invoice number from Linux that you got your vendor credit, and you put your total that you got back, and if you have no um, labor warranty on there, then you go ahead and you highlight it as dark and change your, uh, your um, text to white, and then this one's finished. Everything in, in dark color, like that charcoal color, you never have to look at it again because you're finished it. Remember, everything in the peach color, then we got to go into that, our next step into that. So if any of these, which there are some of them, um, that I went through here, these POs, even though I'm going to go to Lennox and get my money back on the part, then I actually have to go into Comfort Shield or complete care or JV warranty whichever one it is and then I have to file my claims in it and then I have to then process that over here and complete this out and then when I get my check back from them for two hundred and eighty nine dollars and twenty five cents when I actually get my check back I post it here to QuickBooks and put the check number on it then I take that one and I make it charcoal so I never have to do that one again so there's our process of what we're trying to do. I got this pink right here because this pink is pending of what we end up having to do here. So I'm, I'm waiting. Look, I got a, a vendor credit right here. So if you take this one back on this pink line here, I have 936 Conti Street with an evaporator coil. And this is the one I processed early and they, were, they declined me, okay? So I got my vendor credit number in here. I got a total of $397.49. They declined me. I processed it again, and I just highlighted it in pink so that, hey, 
they haven't given me a credit on it okay so if they once they give me a credit my credit number is right here that's the invoice for when they give me my credit from Lennox and then I put my total right there I'm fighting them with this so I just put it in pink to pink for pending that's what we're using that's what I'm using it for pink for pending meaning I'm fighting for this when I go to the Lennox website that particular one has been denied and then they said they said that uh, proof of ownership so I sent them proof of ownership as well so it's pending I'm fighting it we're gonna call that quits tonight peace out later